ready. Hello, my hobby is whores, and I have a penchant for prostitution. The red light district was about sex, all that could be paid for. However, Madam's quietly attained powerhouse status as an unmatched economic driving force within our community in this newly formed frontier. Bozeman's red light district was most active from 1865 to 1917. Our Madam's experienced Lincoln's second inauguration and assassination, the end of the Civil War, the first to hear of Custer's defeat, they thrived until Woodrow Wilson's second term, World War I, and the Great Butte Mine Disaster. My historical journey was born from researching the Bozeman Police Department. Justice Court dockets and City Commission minutes note entries of money being paid to various madams in the town, which of course intrigued me, captivated me, and I had to investigate to find the truth. Our three most famous madams, Louisa Cosell, Kitty Warren, and Frankie Butner, made their journey here by horse and carriage, stagecoaches exactly. It had taken over two months to reach Montana. The horses could only travel a distance of 12 miles, but no longer than 50 during a day with the coach, luggage, and passenger weight. These women took their first steps in the gold rush town of Virginia City. Each coach greeted by inquisitive children, town folk, the hometown newspaper, and of course, a city marshal. Onlookers fascinated by the ladies' outfits, making a statement in ornate clothes and fancy shoes, of course, mostly wearing gloves. When they arrived in Bozeman, they set up shop in the red light district on East Mendenhall, sandwiched between Rouse and Bozeman Avenues, the homes and businesses built of downed trees, and if rich enough, hand-hewn logs, and hopefully a six-foot by three-foot wide side plank walk. In early 1870s, Montana had a population of roughly 20,000, Gallatin County nearing 4,000, with Bozeman proper not yet 800 inhabitants. We were an infant community where the travelers meandered, often refilling supplies and wetting their whistle, and some paying a visit to our famous district. Show me the money! We got pesos, you got pans, you got bread, you got honey, but gold and gold dust and silver and the trusty Morgan and the Liberty Head nickel were accepted as payment. Don't bother trying to barter your fancy chicken or your best pig, because without the greenback, you are not admitted. Brothel Breakdown, a cat house employed streetwalkers known as tenderloins. Cribs held female cat Chinese slaves known as opium dens. Brothels were just for speedy deeds. Bordellos were more a slightly better class of women and a menu. And a parlor home was contained as a cream of the crop. The parlor homes in Bozeman offered food, beer, and whiskey. Gentlemen could listen to a two-man minstrel band, play a heated game of pharaoh, smoke fine cigars, and eat a great dinner. There was an extensive list of favors they could buy, and perhaps a visit from the most infamous Calamity Jane. The working ladies of the parlor would be dressed in fine clothes. Oh, not the low-shoulder muslin dress held up by a corset. Don't get me wrong, though. Those ladies required ripcord quickness in their dresses. Their outfits were made of dyed silk and satin and fine cotton. Many held pockets for the mini Colt revolver. Spieth and Krug Brewery rented the beer hall from the city commission meetings. Not much progress was made, as commissioners were way too drunk to think. Meetings were moved to the Main Street Mercantile business of a madam. Wouldn't you be happy if you were a commissioner? Certainly the little man in the dark coat in the front was. <laughs> in January of 1873, Old Man Trip and Steamboat Billy were pulled from jail and hanged by vigilantes. Seizing opportunity, Louisa Cosell rented her vacant building to the city for a jail. She provided shelter and a cot and a meal in exchange for $125. I think she was pretty busy, madam. These astute women always had an excess of cash on hand, as they didn't accept IOUs. In 1873, our first national bank of Bozeman fell to the Great Depression. Our madam seized the opportunity to become a banking system, and were well known as money lenders and bankers in our community. 
To ranchers and families down on their luck, Louisa would lend them cash for little or no interest. However, she charged this cantankerous old coot, Nelson Story, interest of 2.5% a day for cash advances, as all of his assets were in horses, cattle, and land. Louisa, Kitty, and Frankie amassed land holdings. Each owned a ranch in the Cinnabar Basin for raising race horses. The three ladies also maintained cattle ranches in the Gallatin and Paradise Valleys. They did not experience high turnover as those cowboys enjoyed the great fringe benefits of being employed by a Bozeman madam. Wise business ventures and cash on hand, these ladies gave back to the community. They were known to supply poor children with shoes and coats chalkboards and books for the schools. They helped doctors buy medicine and assisted the town during times of epidemic and outbreaks. Their kindness was far-reaching. Just as these ladies arrived by horse and carriage, well, they left by the same. The death coach paraded Kitty down Main Street to Sunset Hill Cemetery with her working girls and the city band in tow. Louisa was taken in high pomp and circumstance to the train station to be returned to New York, and Frankie has her eternal resting place with her sister Kitty. Louisa Cosell died in 18 of 86 of dropsy, her estate worth $600,000. Kitty died in 1885 of third degree burns, over 70% of her body from lighting and oil sconce. Her estate valued at $455,000. Frankie Butner died of suicide in 1883, worth $100,000.